Hello and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explorer we have a surprise for you. Me! <laughs> hello! I, I thought I would say hello to you and what we're going to do is we're going to code together. We're going to code this code pen challenge and it, the code pen challenge is to make a flash intro. We've been making flash intros for, for many years. Um, up here we have a bunch of posters of old things that I made back in Dan Zen time. And uh, this this thing right there is a mystery. And for that mystery, it would take it was like about 400k in director to load. And so it would take a while to load. And I have people play with cars. So they, they, it's a mystery at a castle. So it's like you, a road, a twisty road to get to the castle. And when you get there eventually, um, uh, well, it, it would load and tell you, hey, great, you're, you're here. But the neat thing is, is the game was, the car was really bad and, and because you were a bad driver. So it was hard to drive half the time you're driving it backwards and stuff like that. It was fun. I've done all sorts of loaders like for restaurants and I have the glass filling up. Or is it the glass emptying? Which one would be better at a bar? Do you want the glass to empty or do you want the glass to fill up? So I love these things and I thought I would build one with you. It's Halloween time. And we'll try a Frankenstein, because I'm tired of witches and ghosts and stuff. So we'll do a Frankenstein. For the longest time, my grand-grand in Hawaii, she is, she's, in, she's a, a horror, a Godwin, sorry, a Godwin. And we thought that it traced back to Mary Shelley, whose grandfather was a Godwin as well, uh, who made Frankenstein. So I thought I was like, related to Mary Shelley and Frankenstein, but it's a different Godwin. It's like, darn, ah, oh, sigh. Oh, well, <laughs> these things happen, right? Anyway, let's code together, shall we? Yeah, we'll, we'll go into some code, 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 code. We'll reduce that down here. Oh, maybe what before we reduce that, let's go grab the Zim template. So this is at zimjs.com. There's one right there, F11. Uh, so zimjs.com and then you want to click on code like that and press copy and that copies the template now i'm not expecting you to <laughs> code with me <laughs> unless you want to pause the video or play it on very slow but i'm just going to code this this is the zim template i'm saving it up now and i'm going to refresh here and that's what it looks like i have a uh, browser plus here but you can open it up in an, uh, a normal browser as well i just thought it'd be easier to code and see it out <gasps> you can't see it <laughs> i just looked over i'm in the way so why don't i go bye bye <laughs> it's like hey can you see me bong giddy bong giddy bong there's a little ball falling behind there so i'm going bye 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 and now here is the um, the, the ball in there <laughs> Good thing we noticed that <laughs> 10 minutes later. All right, so we're in Zim, code creativity, and uh, we're bringing in CreateJS. Thank you very much, CreateJS. That's what Zim's based on. And then Zim adds a bunch of components and controls and conveniences. We bring in those scripts. We come on down here, and we're in a frame. We've gone through the, the template before, but now I'm going to just remove all of this stuff. There is a place where it says code here, but we'll just... Uh, <laughs> just get rid of all that and start coding. So we're going to tile a bunch of sliders and dials. Now, I haven't made this before, so we'll see how it goes. But we're going to tile a bunch of sliders and dials, and then we'll put Frankenstein right in the middle of those. And as the page is loading, the dials and sliders will go up. And once it's loaded, Frankenstein will go, I'm loaded. <laughs> there you go. And electricity will be going and stuff like that. And it should be fun. So that's what we're going to build here in this explore. So I hope that uh, sounds like a good, a good thing for you. I just realized the explore music was going on the whole time, wasn't it? <laughs> Oopsies. I don't have my headphones on because I wanted to be presentable. And so, um, yeah, I guess I was talking over the explore music. My apologies. Should we continue? <laughs> Is it enough to start over? I don't think so. Let's just continue, huh? All right, the flashing light here is, is saying, let's go on. So a new tile, we're going to tile stuff and dot center on the stage, with the capital R. That by default will center a tile on the stage, and that's what the default tile looks like. 
I think we want rectangles. So a new rectangle, rectangle is what we're going to tile. We'll make it, I don't know, 200 by 200. Mm, good enough. And darker, some sort of color. And then we'll make how many of them? Let's see. This was three by three. And we, we could put Frankenstein right in the middle of a grid like that. You know what I mean? There's Frankenstein right here, and this thing's the, but the whole page kind of thing. I, th I think kind of six by four would allow us to take two by two Frankensteins. Six, yeah, let's try six by four. It's kind of this shape and see how that goes. So six columns by four, and we can put in some spacing, 10 and 10. So this is hor horizontal and vertical spacing, and let's have a look. Okay, well, it's close, huh? Just a bit too big. So we have a couple options. We could just use this size and do a little calculation to find out exactly what that should be. Or we could find out how big this is and just use it there. We could scale this so that it fits. Do you want to see what that would look like? It's pretty easy to do. So dot scale to the stage like so. And we refresh here. And now that is scaled on the stage. You can see that we're, we were pretty close. I'm going to do some more, though. So maybe rather than scaling these tiles, perhaps we should just say, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, if you didn't want it going right against the end, you could have said 90% comma there. So this would scale at 90% of the width of the stage. and. Uh, you could also do the height of the stage and fits and various ways to scale it. But let's get rid of the scaling. And instead, we'll just ask how big that is. So const tile is equal to this thing. And I don't need a center sitting up there, dot center. Um, let's ask how big it is. Zog tile dot width and tile type. So what have we got? Oh, uh, pull up this thing. 1250 by 830. 1250 by 830. OK. 1250 by 830. And then that will end up fitting in the browser window. So we refresh that. And now we've got a tile of 1250 by 830 fitting in the browser window. Is that enough gray? I think what we want is something like mm, black everywhere. And then maybe just, mm, should we try gray? That's a little bit light. How about dark? Not bad. By the way, when we tile things, we can put an array in here, dark and comma gray like that. And then it would randomly pick from darks and grays. It might give it a sort of like different look a little. We don't know for sure until we get a bunch of tiles, uh, or sorry, a bunch of di dials on the tiles. <laughs> dials on the tiles and sliders. Uh, so let's try doing that, and then we'll worry about the color of the dials. Do we want rounded corners on those? Probably, wouldn't you say? Mm. So the next parameter of a rectangle is the border color, and then the border width, and then the corner. So do we want to put a border on them? I don't think it's really necessary to put a border on them. So let's null those, null for those two. And then we'll give a corner of 10, 15. Let's see what that looks like. Do you like that hitting, hitting there? Like that. As soon as I put a corner, I'm kind of going, maybe we should just bring that in a little bit. So how do we bring that in a little bit? Well, we can bring it in a little bit by making this 13. Oh, did I miss 13? However, then, OK, great. It's in, a get, it's in a bit, but that is hitting. So now it's hitting up at the top and the bottom. So maybe we better add a bit to that, too, just to, is that enough for the top? Maybe. What do you think? That looks pretty decent, huh? Perhaps a bit much. 1280. <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> be too wide. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's other ways we can deal with that too, but I think that looks pretty good. Great. All right, we've got our tile down here of our rectangles, and now let's put the dials in there. So the dials and sliders. If we were going to want, want to do that, we would const stuff. I don't know what to call dials and sliders. Is a new tile. We don't always tile, but this just happens to be a case where we're wanting to tile things. <laughs> and if we say new dial here, new dial, round brackets, that would then tile dials. <laughs> And we can then say how many we want. Uh, basically, it's probably the same as this stuff, isn't it? 6 by 4 by 10 by 10. And because of that, we could do that in a style. This is going to not work. Oh, it's not going to work at all unless we also dot center it here. And there we have some dials. Those are really gray looking dials. So now we're going to have gray dials on gray backgrounds. But we can adjust the colors of the dials in a bit in some manner. Um, right, they're 100 by 100, the dials, and so you can see that that's not fitting. You can specify the, um, you can specify the call size and the row size. Maybe what we can do is specify the call size and the row size up here in a style and just do it everywhere. But these ones will have a good call size and row size. Now, okay, so we could style it and, and, and do it up above, and that might be a good way. The other way is we can jump to them. Unfortunately, call size and row size are way the heck down there in parameters. So we'd have to go null or undefined, null, null, until we get there like 10 or 12 or however many. And that makes it kind of uh, un unwieldy, doesn't it? You know, that's not very much fun. But what we can do is we can specify uh, an object literal in here. It's called the Zim Duo technique because it was invented in Zim 2. This is the Zim V technique because it was invented in Zim 5. So these are dynamic parameters that allow you to do things like pass in a min and a max for that, or an array, or a series, or the results of a function. Dynamic parameters, amazing. But anyway, in here, we're going to use that again as we tile either dials or sliders. But uh, what are we up to here? Oh, right. So the issue is we want to get to another parameter way the heck down there. So we're going to use the Zim Duo technique. What that means is we put squiggly brackets around all of this stuff. And we'll drop it down so we can see it. This is the object. This is the, par this is the parameter name right here. Parameter name and a value. Then we have the calls. The problem of that is you've got to put these names in rather than just use the parameters. What was after calls? Calls, rows. And then this is the spacing H. And you might be wondering, how do I know these things? And the spacing V. Spacing V is 10. Um, how I know these things is the docs. So let's go look at the docs. Here's Zim. We go back to Zim and hit the docs right here. And then we type in tile, enter. So the tile is expecting an object, calls, rows, spacing, etc. Unique width and height. By the way, that's not the width and height that um, we're wanting. We want the call size and the row size. So you see it's going to be null, 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 call size, row size kind of thing. So we want to get to the call size and the row size, comma, call size, colon, I think it includes the spacing. So 210 and row size, colon, 210 as well, I believe. Let's try her out. And we refresh here. And what do we get? Great. A bunch of dials, but uh, we want to center them. So that would be v align, or well, align will do first. Align, colon, center, and v align, colon, center, like that. And we refresh, and we have a bunch of dials on our tiles. <laughs> Super. But we don't have sliders yet. Well, we can do that by putting in an array here. 
and randomly picking between dials and a new slider. One of the problems with a slider is it's going to be really long and, and won't fit in there. Do you want to see it? Here is a bunch of long sliders that are overlapping one another because they don't fit within there properly. So we can go bar length. That's another param uh, parameter. Mm, I don't know, 150 maybe, something like that. And what do we have? Yeah, possibly. OK, let's talk about styles. All of this stuff can be put in here. And we're sort of lucky in that, oh, this is all of the tile stuff. Dials and sliders. If we want to make the dials and sliders look like something, like add colors and that, we could go in and put them right in here, put the, the details and the parameters. Or we can use styles. So here's what styles look like. Style is equal to, and this is styles on the canvas. It's slightly different than CSS, but um, CSS really is like coding, isn't it? They're, they're like object literals. So we're using an object literal that's been around in coding for longer than CSS for the same reasons. And so one of the styles we can set is, I like the look of our dials and sliders that are used for sound apps. And I'll show you why. Sound, colon true. This will turn all of our stuff into looking like it's ready for sounds. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it's not quite Halloween, -y, but <laughs> you know, okay, I'll take those. <laughs> um, so let's use these, and these will be the progress bars that are going up, isn't it? Although this this doesn't default to having ticks in it, and we might want to say comma use ticks colon true there, and that will also add the ticks to to that. And let's change some of the colors that are in here. Oh, geez, I don't know if I can remember what those are. So we'll go to the dial and look it up in the dial. That's a radial dial. Here's a dial. Hmm, we've got indicator colors. Uh, the inner colors, right? Where is that? Indicator, in, indicator, inner ticks, ticks, uh, inner. Do I have an inner? Yeah, inner color. So I think one of those things, you see that pink? That's either the inner color or the inner color two, <laughs> not sure. Okay, comma, inner color is red or whatever. Yes. And what about making, should we make the background of that be black? Let's see, what is that? That is called the accent, the accent color and the accent background color. So we'll make the accent color also red, or we could randomize these here, and we'll make the background accent color, accent background color, I mean, accent background color, nice. We'll make it black, and let's see how we're looking. So there's the red, here's the, the red of that. that. That'll probably be pretty effective. We could randomize that stuff if we wanted to, to make these dials look a little bit different at times. And I'm not sure I like the gray coming in here. Let's just see what it looks like if it's if we don't bother with the different colors. Uh, just make it a bit dark, I think. The dark as, as opposed to the gray. Hmm. Hard to say until we get our Frankenstein in and all the zapping and stuff. That, that does look a little bit more regular, I guess. And I'm not sure how much we want to randomize the stuff that's in here. So for instance, uh, that would be, hmm, where's, where is it? There's the inner color of red. We could say red, comma, what other color? Uh, black, I'm not sure what, orange? Frankenstein-y, uh, Halloween-y. Didn't work very well. The inner color uh, red, black, and orange. Why didn't they go? Maybe it's the, we definitely said red, black, and orange. Oh, I know what it's doing. It's picking one. So it's just picking one of those colors randomly, and then it's being duplicated in here. Oh, that could be an issue. Let's try a delay pick, but I don't know if it's going to work. Delay, probably not. Delay pick, colon true, comma. And we refresh here. That did. OK. So what we've done there is we delayed the pick. Because the problem is the style is being applied. 
to the to here and then this tile is duplicating it uh, cloning it and it's cloning whatever it picked randomly initially so let's comment that out just just to start so there it is black what happened is the style is black but then the tile clones the black ones and we refresh it here it's orange and it clones the orange ones so what we can do is we can pass in a delay pick true and it won't pick it right away it will instead pass through this every time it clones it it will pull it from from the original sort of zim v value and there you are getting different i don't know how effective that is though it's like who cares if those dials are different maybe we do maybe we don't but i think we have bigger fish to fry <laughs> uh, you know as, as we make this thing so what color did you like best did you like orange for halloween maybe it would be better if we change the dial color itself let's try that what are the colors of the dial they are called the background color probably background and spell it color and maybe this will be more impressive if we change these things thank you usb device i don't know why you're broken but you are Well, that looks like different dials. Although the background color, is that the, oh, that's a background color of the button on the slider. And I don't know, I guess that doesn't get the delayed pick or something like that. Because it's, yeah, one more, <laughs> one more removed in inheritance. Uh, anyway, what do you think? I think that, the, no, I, you know, I don't really like that either. However, maybe we can make the background colors all orange and let's see what that looks like. That's all background colors, orange. Nah, I kind of like the old fashioned Frankenstein look a bit better. So let's just set the inner color to red. It will keep it consistent, we'll carry on and we'll come back if, you know, once it's finished and we'll, we'll take a look. However, the background color could be darker. Let's see what darker looks like. It's kind of evil looking. That might be all right. We're going to have electricity going over top of this as well. Anyway, we can come back to that too. So there's some styles, some information on styles. And I don't know if I like what it did to that button there. The reason for that, check out this background color is being applied to everything, including the button inside the slider. So if we only wanted the background colors to be applied to the slider, and that's it, then we would have to do something like this. Well, we could just go to the slider and stick the background color right there. <laughs> could do that. Or we can um, specify, like this is broad styles. This is everything that's being made from now on will get these styles. Well, we don't have to do it that way. We can say um, any types, such as the dial, will get these styles right here, background color darker. So only the dial, or we could put that in one if we want, uh, only the dial there, only the type dial will get a background color of darker. And we save this and refresh. And now only the dials have the background color of darker. The slider thing is a white, and I think I prefer that. Although we could you know, specify sliders, we'll have this. Slider dials, we'll have this. Or slider, not dial, slider buttons, we'll have this. Anyway, good enough for now. There's, a, there's a, a, a tile of a whole bunch of controls. Wonderful. Let us carry on. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Uh, what do we want to do next? Let's put the Frankenstein guy in there, I think. So we would want to basically make a rectangle that goes in these four right here. So that will be a new rectangle. Uh, I can do it. A new rectangle. How big? 200. Uh, so it's 200, but times 2, which is 400. Or uh, let's see, uh, we, we've like hard coded stuff all over the place. Hasn't it? It's going to be 2 times 210, or well, wait, it's got one spacing in it. So it's going to be 410, isn't it? 410, usually I would store that in a variable by 410. And so I could you know, calculate and change it in one place, but let's try that for now. 
and we'll give it a color. Let's try let's try black. Or, or blay. Would you like the color blay? Black and dot center and see what happens. Bum bum bum. Ooh, it looks like we've left just the shavings of uh, sort of like a resized shavings of the outer gray looking so we can probably afford to make that a touch bigger but how does that look and we put a Frankenstein in there I think that we could put the Frankenstein on a panel too Would Frankenstein look better on a bigger panel does this work 10 by 10 I might have to jiggle this a little bit but this would then be darker and, oh no, darker, we would have null here. And null, why was I doing 10 by 10? That's the corner. So uh, 10, by, 10 is the corner that we got there. And I guess it's not darker. What was our panel color? Just dark. Hm. What do you guys think? Frankenstein on there? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we've overlaid a panel on top that's just a new rectangle and then we put the Frankenstein in there <laughs> Frankenstein how do we make a Frankenstein well I believe Frankenstein might also be a rectangle <laughs> I mean there's we could put a picture of Frankenstein in there and that would be fine but uh, for for now a new rectangle and what color will Frankenstein be hmm. well first of all he'd be something like uh, 300 Oh, not 300 wide. Try 200 wide, 300 high, and purple. <laughs> Dot center. Yeah, what's Frankenstein doing? Okay, uh, right. Frankenstein head. Not bad. A little, a little squarish, wouldn't you say? So, does he need a border color? I don't know. Good, good question. Does Frankenstein get. How about purple dot darken? Uh, 0.5. That's the border, and we'll make it a border with the five. So what we've just done there is made the the border color purple, but we're going to darken it, and then we're going to make it a five. And with we should also give it some rounded corners. You might not like this, but let's try 20. I think that might be too rounded. I'm not sure. Hard to say. Oh, it's not rounded enough. How about 50? Boom! Frankenstein head. Needs to be a little skinnier. 160. Yeah, it's a little fatter. <laughs> we designers have. Oh, let's twink of 10 pixels. That will do us for now. Uh, we don't even know what the rest of Frankenstein is going to look like, so that's good. Perhaps we'll go a little bit darker on the purple. And uh, get that. Okay, great. Frankenstein needs to look dead. As a matter of fact, I would like a darker purple in general, I think. Dot darken. He, he needs to look a little bit pallid, and you know, like he's not alive yet. So we're going to darken that to 0.3. This is a darker Frankenstein. Yeah, that's kind of like we hardly almost we almost don't see him there. We're trying to build and make him go alive. We can actually animate the color in time as as it's loading. We can also animate the color towards green. Eventually, we'll want him to be a green color, <laughs> whatever we think Frankenstein is. Does Frankenstein have to have a neck? <laughs> it's like Franken face. <laughs> oh boy, Franken face. There we go. Um, or or not? What do you think? Is it Frankenface or is it? <laughs> does he have a neck? If he had a neck, we could put those bolts on him. Wouldn't it be important to have a couple bolts on his neck? I think that's that's an important part of Frankenstein. So uh, we're going to center him great, but we will also then dot move M O V. It's a short chainable method. We're going to move him up. So zero in the X, but we're going to move him negative. Well, we don't have much room. We'll try a negative 20 there in the Y. And what does that give us? Okay, and then we want to put a neck on Mr. Frankenstein here, which would be another new rectangle. New rectangle. Uh, how wide is a neck these days? 80. 
And how high is the neck? How high is the neck? Well, we could mask this whole thing so we don't really care, but we'll just stick something in there and then we'll figure it out. We'll go with 100 for the height of the neck. We'll also make it uh, even darker purple. Does it need a border? Yeah, I don't know. Do we? Maybe the border is the same, or the, the neck is the same color as the border, which was darkened by 0.8. And let's see what we get. So there's a neck darkened by 0.8, and we will dot center that for now. We can also dot place it, and that might help us place it. And let's see what that looks like. So, oh, we put the neck underneath. So the neck currently is underneath the um, the Frankenstein. So anyway, why don't we just guess at it, and then maybe we can we can probably guess at it. Placing allows you to pick it up and drag it, but because we put it behind the, behind, we can't pick it up and drag it. And then in the console, it will tell you where you placed it, which is nice. But if we just wing it here for a little bit, there we are centering it. Sorry, I don't have much room to type in here. There we are centering it, we'll center it, but then we're going to dot move it, M-O-V, uh, zero, and then we're gonna move it down, 100. How does, it, does that work? Did it work? No, my neck isn't down far enough. <laughs> we're gonna move it down 200. Did it work? No, my neck is down too far. So uh, somewhere in between there, 170, let's see. And this is what placing would, would um, prevent is we wouldn't have to kind of do this fixing we just drag it and place it not bad do you think the neck should go right to the right to the bottom of the panel probably it's like he's looking in through the panel or something as a matter of fact we could make this sort of look more like a sheet of glass or something we can apply a gradient to it. Uh, gray. That's not bad, huh? Not, not too sheety. <laughs> it's not too sheety, but it, it just sort of makes them stand out a little bit more. And we want to move that neck a touch, don't we? Uh, 150, it looks like maybe 155 down there. Okay, good enough. Is it, one, is, is it yet a 156? Yeah, even better. It's right off the edge now. Okay, so Frankenstein's got a neck. <laughs> and we need some bolts. Uh, the bolts we can put in behind. Oh, geez, you know. Let's put the bolts on top, and then we'll place them. Uh, new rectangle. Rectangle again. Great. It's like, wow, look at what we can build in Zim. A bunch of rectangles. New rectangle, and uh, what do we want here? We want something like, um, how wide is that other thing? The other thing's 80 wide, so we want something like a, I don't know, 120 wide. And how high? Who knows? 50 high. We'll start with that, and we'll make the bolts. What color are bolts? Dark. We definitely should apply a gradient here, huh? Anyway, let's just put something in there and then we'll we'll adjust and and oh and then bolts have little I don't know maybe we can just make the bolts not actually look like uh, we probably have to make them look like bolts blah 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 uh, you know like have little heads on them so we have to make more rectangles for the heads or we could draw the bolts with a blob and put the blob in there but anyway well they're so close to rectangular we may as well just keep on drawing rectangles so dot center we'll center this and then we're going to say dot place and watch we'll use that place for you and you can see how that works so there's the bolts but right away i can see that it's not even worth placing because those are the wrong uh, that's the wrong shape so what do we need about half of that maybe make it 30 and we need them to be longer so we'll try 150 and yeah yeah that could be so that's roughly placed. And then we look at the console. And the console tells us the location of those bolts. We could probably estimate or guesstimate. We just like wipe out this stuff and say, look it at that place. There is probably, you know, a goodly looking number that would make sense there. But let's see if this roughly bolts them in place. That, that, that's the same place. We want to put them at the bottom. So we could ord them, like dot 
dot bot will put them all the way at the bottom of everything, including underneath all the tiles and stuff. So that sucks. Dot ord will, if we say minus one, it will minus one. That'll probably do it. <clears throat> uh, not quite, um, because I guess there's two things it needs to go underneath. And we refresh here. And there, <laughs> is that looking very Frankenstein? -y? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't look like Frankenstein to me. It looks like a purple water cooler or something. <laughs> Perhaps that's what it should be. Ooh, the evil purple water cooler. Actually, that'd be fun huh? for Halloween to make you make all your water cooler colors purple or something like it. Put purple dye in it. Yeah, great idea. Uh, right. Well, not worrying too much about it. I think we need little knobs on those bolts to make them look like bolts, and they need to be a bit more silvery looking, perhaps. But uh, aside from the ord issue, who cares? Let's just move the rectangle up uh, in front of these other guys. So these are what? Well, the neck. And uh, is this Frankenstein we're doing here? Yeah, that's the gray pattern. So that'll work, and let's, instead of dark, why don't we call it light? We'll make some light bolts, or perhaps we could even make real silver bolts. Uh, that might be better in color. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So there's some silver bolts, but we would need some silver bolt heads on them. Also looks a little thick once we get heads on them. So this is the thickness. We'll drop it to 20. Is that roughly in the same place still? good enough and let's put some heads on those things bloody hell new rectangle uh, sorry about this i didn't really expect to spend a half hour making rectangles the whole time but so be it you know we're getting there you can like i said bring in a picture you could also draw with a blob which sometimes is easier to do let me show you drawing with a blob just so you have an idea it's in Zim, and under examples, there's Zim Neo, which is here somewhere. There's Zim Neo. It's where we were animating things on paths. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on paths, and it also includes Pizzazz 4. So another place you can, so here, here was us drawing with, uh, with blobs and squiggles earlier, and then it's like, you know, drawing in Illustrator. Then you hit the code, you're given the code, you put that in a blob, and you, you've got this shape. And you can change the colors of it and all that stuff. So if you want better shapes, that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other way is to go to Zim. And under code, all of our extra libraries are down a little bit in code underneath a, a bunch of stuff here. So there's Zim Socket, Game, Physics, Physics uh, 3. And then here are uh, backing shapes, icons. Pa patterns, and then here's a link that takes you to here. And we've also got other shapes in here that you can add to or, or go to. And there's various shapes for squiggles. Squiggles are basically lines. Uh, blobs are full. And you can set colors inside of there as well. And these are user editable if you want. So you can let the user edit these just like that as well, because all this is made in Zim. All right, so a Frankenstein is still sitting in here, the purple water cooler. We want a few rectangles to go on there. Hopefully this won't be too um, difficult. We'll make them 30 by 30. I don't know. Usually they're taller, so maybe 40 by 30. And they can also be silver or a slightly darker color. Slightly dark, should be lighter. Well, we'll try them just silver. And why don't we dot center them and just locate them as well. And, and that way, uh, great, dot place, or sorry, uh, place them, mm, place. Uh, but we need to put them down here underneath so we see it centered to start. And we go like that. And there we have a bolt. And I totally did that the wrong way. So what happened? It went 40 by 30. I wanted 40 high and maybe 20 wide and let's have a look and see if that bolt looks a bit better you can use your yeah that that looks good enough huh for what we're doing so you can use your arrows to to position that as well and then let's bring back our console and figure out where that went to console there <laughs> 
at these fine numbers right here. That's where it got located. And we put that instead of the center in the place. We can put that one. And we'll make a copy of this and move it over. So this is located at 558 in the Y. How about we go plus uh, 200 and let's see if that goes roughly in the right place. Oh, no. Uh, and we're back to this plus 150. Or we could place that as well and get the mm, pretty close, huh? Uh, 130. I don't think so. Too far in. Yeah. 140. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! We got some bolts on our Frankenstein guy. Woohoo! We got bolts. We got bolts. Or water water cooler taps. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. What do you think? Water cooler taps? Or are they bolts? Okay, so Frankenstein eyes. <laughs> Let's make rectangles for Frankenstein's eyes. OMG, and a rectangle for Frankenstein's mouth, and we'll call it <laughs> we'll call it a day. <laughs> what do you say? Um, super. Uh, we we could. You probably you got the idea. You don't even need to watch this anymore, do you? What we'll do is this. We're going to finish our Frankenstein rectangle, and then we will we will stop this, whatever we call this, and explore. And then we'll do a second part explore. Does that sound good? So uh, if you want to forget the rest of this explore, although we'll probably get some tips along the way, you want to forget the rest of this explore and just go to the second part, you will see that we'll have finished the Frankenstein's eyes and mouth. <laughs> oh crap, Frankenstein's mouth is supposed to look like a little zipper or something like that, isn't it? Well, there's no way I'm gonna make a, I'm not going to make um, a bunch of little rectangle zippers. We could do a tile of alternating colored things. Actually, that would work probably pretty good. Yeah, I think it would. All right. Anyway, the eyes. Let's do the eyes. New rectangle again, because he's so rectangular, this guy. Should we just make them <laughs> as big as the bolts? Bigger, I think. 50 by 50. And what we can do is let's make it 50 by, oh no, higher, like so 50 high and 30. I don't know what color he'll be. It'll probably be, for now, we'll make it like blackish colored, I guess. Black. Black. And that means he won't have a border. Okay. We'll dot center, dot place. And let's see if this is the type of eye that we want to place. Would that be a good enough eye size? I think bigger, so we'll go <clears throat> 40 by 60. And then I'm going to make another, uh, a more rectangular this way. And we're going to put like one on top of the other. It might be neat to, right now he's, he's not doing too well. We can set the alpha of this down and then bring his eyes up when he's loaded. <clears throat> so I'm not even going to, uh, am I going to place it? Did we get the right size there now? I think we were making a bigger eyeball, and yeah, you know, that's uh, probably acceptable. And so where do we place that? Eyes are supposed to be at half the head height. Can you believe it? So let's do it a little bit, maybe cheat a touch. Uh, okay, good enough. Placed. Copy the location and get rid of these guys. And we'll just copy that guy and move this one over like we did before, plus 100. And do we have two black eyes? Plus 80, 70. I like, I like playing a little game of trying to imagine where this is going to be located. Uh, great. And now let's uh, swap this up with um, a new rectangle here that is uh, these two things swapped Control T, and not black but rather mm, we'll leave a black border and we'll make this mm, dark or something like that for now Darl, black and located i don't know we should have center regged it and then we could have located these things uh, am i placing this dot place except that i don't know if that's going to work out for me uh, this too thin uh, so three on the black of that and what do we got it's 
looking pretty Frankenstein-y. Could be a bit thinner or something like that, I think. And so that's in the height, maybe 30. And if we center edge these, we could have just sent or put them right on the right place. Uh, good enough. He's a he's a funny looking Frankenstein, but uh, I think that will roughly be okay as long as they're not too close together. Once I place the other one, plus this is just going to be a plus seventy-two. Let's see. I guess so. Frankenstein eyes! He totally looks like Frankenstein! What cute eyelashes you have, Frankenstein! Does he need... he needs one of those jiggy jaggy hairdo things. I might have to make a blob for the jig jaggy hairdo, right? You know what I mean? It's got to be like an up-down ergy hairdo. I think Frankenstein needs the up-down ergy hairdo. That's, that's like very Frankenstein-esque. And then he needs a mouth. All right, so let's make the Frankenstein hairdo. We'll go off to where we were before. <laughs> Is that a good hairdo? That was actually for a wig. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, we could start with this one, I guess. Uh, Frankenstein jig jaggy hairdo is kind of like the opposite, though, isn't it? That's a vampire. What is? He's got a bunch of them. He's got a square head, first of all. So we're going to need another point here. So there we add another point. And great, that looks pretty squarish. It doesn't have to be perfect. So there, and we'll add another point in here. And then double click on these things to get the different types of, <laughs> come on, double click. Double click on these things to get the different type of uh, connectors. And what have we got? Is that good enough for a Frankenstein hairdo? Don't, don't worry, we can set it to be black. I think that that will probably be fine. That looks quite Frankenstein-y. And so we grab the code for that, copy, and we will come back to here and make a blob. New blob, round brackets, squiggly brackets. Well, the points are, are they the first thing? I think the color is the first thing, so we'll make it black. And then I think the points come in here, but what we'll do is we'll store it in a, a variable or a const pair is equal to, and there we go. So that's that's the points, that big long thing is our points, and we can throw the points right in here, here like that. And you can see what's going on a little bit better. Dot center and dot place. I think we can place Frankenstein's hair. One thing is we don't want it to be interactive anymore. And this is going to be like cute. Oh, that didn't work out. So I think that the points must not be the second parameter. So let's have a look. In the docs, we type in blob, put up a space. No, there's border color, border width, and then points. Do we want the hair to have border? I don't think we need to. Null, comma, null, comma, and then the points. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Frankenstein's hair. How about a dot sky? We'll scale it ooh, almost half, 0.6 or something. So we're dot skying. We're uh, putting a short chainable method to do the scaling. And let's see if that's going to be rough. Ooh. You know what? That might be pretty close. I wouldn't mind if his hair was a touch bigger. 0.65. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, and how's our place doing? F, not F11, F12, but I don't know if we can F12 to get our console up or not. I seem to have to press this console several times. I'm not used to using the console. And there's our place. So we're no longer going to center it, we're just going to locate it. And we refresh here. And there's Frankenstein's head, but uh, Frankenstein's head, although it's been scaled now, includes the ability to edit it. So we don't want to let the people edit Frankenstein's hair. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I don't know if anybody's ever said that before. Would you like to edit Frankenstein's hair or you know, change the hairstyle? Hairstyle ist. So we would set this blob to be interactive false. And 
Oh, heck, we can just throw it in the style if we want. So up, up here in the style, we'll just say interactive colon false, and that would mean all blobs are interactive false on the page, and so be it. So there we go. Now we can't interact with the blob. There's Frankenstein's semi-Dracula-like hairdo. I think people will recognize this guy as Frankenstein. I hope we need a mouth, though. We could make the mouth with the blob. By the way, the hair, just recently, if, if we take a look here, just recently made this really neat, uh, really neat pen. Speaking of code pen challenge, so, oh, I don't want to make a new pen, not yet, no. Just want to go to my pen, so where, there it is, your work. So, except it wasn't under your work, it was under Dan Zen's work. Okay, Dan Zen. And here it is not. <laughs> because we have to go to all pins. And here it was. So uh, this guy right here, that's what the wig was used for, one of the things anyway, the wig was, for. and look how we're animating that. So you can animate these blobs as well. There's the interactive false style that we just set. Let's set it to true. And we ref, okay, we run it, <laughs> great. And check that out. Look at all those things animating. So there is the hair, we're, we're wiggling these points and wiggling that to make it go and, and for the lips we're like rotating wiggling things and stuff and that makes it look like this guy's talking so we can do that but we're just making a progress bar Frankenstein at the moment and so we're not going to do that <laughs> is that okay so heading back through these things to wherever we had our main code pen challenge I want to keep this around so we can get back to it want to. There's this weird looking Frankenstein coming in. We need the mouth. We could tile a little mouth in there. So where were we working? Style or down here. And a bunch of rectangles. We got the hair in there. New tile. New rectangle. And these are going to be little teeth. So they only need to be, oh, I don't know how big are teeth these days. 30 by, oh, that's wide again, not that wide, nearly not that wide. 10 by 20 high. And alternating colors. So a series of, oh, what? White and, and black? Probably not. Light, silver, silver and tin I don't know and then what do we have to do we have to say that is what is that that's the the rectangle comma how many of these things well I don't know 10 of them by two of them oh it shouldn't be even if it's even these are gonna tile and it's gonna so we better make it nine of them by two of them otherwise they'll tile one under another evenly and that won't look very good we got no space no space at the moment and let's dot center that on uh, Frankenstein here and see what we get. What the heck? How come it did it? How come it did three by three? I think I must have put this in the wrong place. I did. I threw them in the rectangle. So what have we got? Right, because the round bracket of the series here, they need to go in that space. <laughs> Those are the lamest looking teeth ever. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll put a dot move on them. I don't, or not a dot move, because we don't know how, I, I could just move them, yeah, all right, let's just dot move them down, a, a zero, and move them down 50. It's like a little game, isn't it? Playing, playing around with these numbers. <laughs> so sad looking. Okay, move down 60. It's like, hey there, baby, I'm Frankenstein. How's it going? Oh, yeah, I'm Frankenstein. We could put a skew on it. <laughs> that would just be too funny. Dot skew, S-K-E of ooh, 20. And let's have a look. Yeah, 10 maybe. There we go. And uh, yeah, the cheesy Frankenstein, and we might have moved this over 10 or so in the, in the moving, uh, not quite 10. Uh, let's skew it by 15, and then maybe 10 will look good. Yeah. <laughs> action, action, Frankie. Uh, I think we moved it over a little bit too much. Five, 
five. I'm saying five. Make my fingers do five. There we go. Okay, so good enough, huh? It's like Speedway Frankenstein. <laughs> Speedy Frankie. He's supposed to be out of order, though, at the moment. So maybe we should darken those. How would we darken that and then turn them lighter later when he's happy? Because right now it looks like he's pretty alive, aside from maybe the purple. And aside from the dead eyes, we're going to have to bring them to life. However, we are approaching an hour on this, and I just did want to get a Frankenstein in there. Maybe we can worry about how we're going to make him alive later. Uh, if we want to make that a little darker, we could throw darker colors in here. Or we could darken these and then light them. Uh, okay, then let's make it... What does he look like with dark teeth? And Dark and gray teeth. Let's see if... How, how it goes there. It looks like he's out of touch a little bit there. You know what? He's he's not alive yet. Not a, I'm not alive. I'm going to have a place for teeth. These will be my teeth. And then as, as we dial in the animation, we'll sort of bring him more to life. Super. He's turned off at the moment. <laughs> turned off. We'll turn him on. Woohoo! He's going to be loaded, baby. And we're going to do that, believe it or not, we're going to do that in the next... Um, uh, Zim Explore. So we'll uh, bring back Frankenstein and all these dials in the next Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully you had fun with that one. <laughs> You're still here and you'll come back again one day. Woohoo! Okay, ciao!